fucking n Jeez, oh my god. I don't see a reason for trying or for breathing. Someone shot again right now and connected with the house upstairs. You're asking for my money, but I pulled together to save my life. I will see you guys uh, either tomorrow or the next day. Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we'll be delving into the chilling depths of the darkest live streaming iceberg. For those of you who may be new to the concept of an iceberg, I'll provide a brief overview to show you how this will unfold going forward. In essence, iceberg videos present tier lists that begin at the pinnacle, often referred to as the sky, and progressively descend into the enigmatic depths below the surface. Starting out on this journey, we'll embark with more light-hearted moments and slowly but surely venture down into the spine chilling and almost downright horrifying moments that happen on live stream all the way to the dark abyss of the iceberg. Before we proceed as well, I would like to give acknowledgement to Toof, whose icebergs videos actually inspired me to start my own. So thank you Toof, I'll give a link to his ones down below in the channel. Using his formula, I've managed to curate my own intriguing tier list based around icebergs. So let's brace ourselves for the unexpected and delve deeper into the darkest live streaming moments iceberg. The Sky Streamer saves girl from stalker On February 10th, 2020 IRL Twitch streamer Rob CD was live in Japan hanging out by a kebab store when he noticed a girl clearly in distress. A man was also in close pursuit behind her. She quickly noticed Rob approached him and claimed, here is my friend. Rob responded quickly, seeming to understand the situation unfolding before him. After a slight awkward conversation back and forth between Rob and the Japanese man, he quickly gave up and left the area. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm very afraid of Are you? Are you in danger? Yes, very danger. Really? The girl thanked Rob, and you could visibly see how grateful she was to be rid of the stalker earning him the title, the Angel of Shibuya. PewDiePie Bridge Incident, September 10th, 2017. PewDiePie is a highly popular Swedish gaming and reaction content creator known by his real name, Felix Schellberg. On his YouTube gaming live stream, Felix was playing Player Unknown Battlegrounds or PUBG for short, a battle royale last man standing game popular at the time in 2017. After PewDiePie's teammate was shot down on a bridge in game and subsequently killed, PewDiePie responded with What a fucking n Jeez, oh my god, what the f <laughs> Sorry, but what the f Which was then followed by an awkward follow-up with the streamer panicking and stating I didn't mean that in a bad way. This was only weeks after facing racism claims for displaying Nazi imagery. Twitch ambassador abusing power. May 16th. 2020. Twitch safety and advisory council member Ferociously Steph live streamed herself stating that all video game voice chats should be taken away, which sparked controversy and outrage across gaming forums. The only way to have a level playing field at the highest level of play is 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 to not have voice chat, to not have people give up their linguistic profiles. She wants to ban voice chat from competitive games because she is arguing that it creates an uneven playing field for marginalized people. Okay, okay, I, I have to be honest. That is that is objectively and equivocally stupid. <laughs> she then went live on May seventeenth and made the following statement: "I'm not going anywhere," Steph said. I have power, they can't take it away from me. And honestly, there are some people that should be afraid of me. And they are, because I represent moderation and diversity. And I'm going to come for hurtful, harmful people. Ferociously Steph also featured many streams of herself having an orgasm, which she referred to as a deergasm. also claiming she consumed grass. She was removed from the Twitch Ambassador Council shortly after these events. Twitch leak, October 2021. An unidentified cyber intruder claims to have exposed the entirety of Twitch, laying bare its source code and sensitive user payout information. 
The hacker disseminated a torrent link of colossal size, approximately 125 gigabytes, justifying the leak as a means to foster more disruption and competition in the online video streaming space, stating their community is a disgusting toxic cesspool the files mentioned on 4chan are indeed accessible for download as indicated by the anonymous hacker. Remarkably, the leaked data has been verified as authentic, encompassing the valuable source code of the streaming platform owned by Amazon. They reassured their community that their teams are working feverently to ascertain the full scope of the incident and promised to provide updates promptly. Narcisa Wright, March 21st, 2022. Twitch streamer and YouTuber Narcissa Wright was banned for an NSFW link given to her by a member of her chat in which she opened on stream unaware of the contents. Shortly after her suspension from the platform, Narcissa went to Twitter and tweeted out, I want to kill myself and shoot the people at the Twitch headquarters. Ha 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 ha. Which was further followed up by more tweets threatening both self-harm and harm to anyone working at Twitch. Narcissa then went on to state she never had any malicious intent towards Twitch and even added that it was the platform's fault for not reaching out to her. Just two weeks later, Twitch made the decision to reduce her ban from permanent to just 22 days after apologizing in an appeal following her statements on Twitter. The tip of the iceberg. Live stream of fakes disability. April 5th, 2012. Angel Hamilton better known by his online alias Zillion OP, lost his entire platform on Twitch due to faking his condition. The World of Warcraft streamer had achieved fame as a wheelchair streamer shortly after joining the platform in 2012. He garnered attention by sharing a harrowing tale of surviving a fatal car accident the previous year and relied on a web of lies to garner donations from sympathetic fans. However, fate took a dramatic turn for Angel in 2013. A clip surfaced where the streamer seemingly unaware of being recorded stood up from his wheelchair effortlessly and walked away. During which time the girl on call with Angel started to panic. Oh my God. Before stumbling her words into a story about taking her dog to a fish store. Our dog, our dog. Oh my God. We took our dog um, like to the fish shop today because the dog loves just like going out and meeting new people. Realizing that his stream was still live, he rushed back to his computer and swiftly turned the webcam away, attempting to conceal the truth. This sparked outrage across his fan base as many people wanted to donate to support Angel with his ongoing disability. Angel spoke out about the incident, admitting his ruse and continued to say he should have told his fans that after physical therapy, he could now walk again. Zillion has since rebranded to It's Bluish and continues to make content on YouTube to this day. Streamer Fakes Cancer January 2021 Kor, or known better by her Twitch handle, Miss Dirty Bird, was fast becoming a well-known live streamer primarily playing Rocket League. In January of 2021, she would go live to announce she had just been diagnosed with brain and lung cancer. That's okay. It's right now. I don't see a reason for trying or for talking or for breathing. Prompting a flood of support and donations from her online community. Kaur's own sister caught wind of these claims and took to stream stating, I wanted to address my sister's stream today, her having cancer. She hasn't said anything to any of us. Prompting Kaur to admit to her lies, revealing she faked cancer. To add insult to injury, Kaur's apology video was discovered to be a word-for-word -word template of the movie Cyberbully. That video has since been removed. The Creature, 2015. Chance Morris, better known as Soda Poppin' by his fans, has been a colossal streaming titan for Twitch since its small beginnings. But not everything has been smooth sailing. Back in 2015, Soda told a harrowing tale of a time a fan drove 18 hours uninvited to his house, who he nicknamed The Creature. The fan, who we now know by his online username of Deffy, invited himself into Soda's home while he was live. Soda would go on to state in an interview with his brother. Random people started showing up and one of them showed up, he drove 18 hours to the house. Um, he's walked in the door, he's like, hey man, I drove so long, I was like, oh cool, hey, let me take you to, I took him to Chili's, just me and him. And he seemed somewhat normal, seemed fine. A little weird, but 
I dealt with it. It's fine. Um, came back and I felt bad. I was like, listen, you drove so long, let him stay in the room. And this went on for a long time. And eventually, you know, the next day came by and he's like, I'm too tired. I want to drive. That's fine. All right, whatever. One more day. I'm streaming. Do your thing. Nick had enough. Nick's left. It's like, listen, I'm not staying in the house with this weirdo. No offense. Soda Pop and described the situation where he and the other tenants were unable to confront Deffy to ask him to vacate the premises. I need to kick this mother out. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't have the balls to do it. So Nick's ex had to come in and basically the police were almost getting brought in. Wait, you're telling me that you and Nick were too scared to do it so you got a, a girl to do it? Yeah. Nice. But she did it. Chance went on to say that Deffy would cry and talk about how girls hated him and they didn't understand what it was like living with ADHD and trying to get him to take his medication. When he was finally removed from the house, he left behind what he referred to as a present, which turned out to be a huge stash of drugs. Animal Abuse, 2019. Natalia Mongolan, AKA Alinity, is a well-known just chatting streamer. Back in 2019, Alinity came under fire for animal abuse while live on Twitch. Clips of her started to surface when she decided to pour vodka into her mouth and proceeded to bait the cat into licking her alcohol-soaked lips. The cat reared back in disgust and shook violently. I'm no animal expert, but a quick Google search indicates that animals should not be ingesting alcohol. Even in small doses, cats can potentially die. Alinity was soon after again caught abusing her beloved pet by throwing the cat behind her chair during another live stream. She has since apologized and continues to stream on Twitch to this day. Body of the iceberg. Dr. Disrespect house shooting. September 11th, 2018. Herschel Guy Beam, better known as Dr. Disrespect or The Doc for short, is a world-renowned American video game live streamer. Doc is no stranger to weird things happening on stream and has had his fair share of controversies in the past. But on September 11th, 2018, the Doc would go live playing Warzone, only to be interrupted by a noise heard faintly on stream, disappearing quickly off camera. The doc came back to the stream and had this to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta fucking end the, uh, I've gotta end the broadcast right now. Someone shot at our house, broke the fucking upstairs window. This is the second shot someone shot yesterday at our, someone shot yesterday at our fucking house. And someone shot again right now and connected with the house upstairs, right? You're driving by, right? You fuck, you pussy. Seeming understandably distressed, he quickly ended the live stream, taunting the attackers. Thankfully, no one was injured, and the authorities later confirmed it was a BB gun fired at them from a local park. Aeroplane bomb threat. April 27th, 2017. Paul Danino, aka Ice Poseidon, was primarily an in real life Twitch streamer, or IRL for short on Twitch. There have been many altercations involving swattings, suicide filming, as well as racism and scamming claims around this content creator in particular. But none of those come even remotely close to the time Ice was streaming in an airport preparing to head from LA back to Austin, Texas. Ice would go on to leak his flight tickets, his gate number, and even the airport itself prompting him to state, I don't want to get on this flight. And he was right. As soon as they boarded, the police swarmed the airplane, taking him into custody. A viewer of his stream had decided to call local authorities claiming that ICE was carrying a bomb. This gained media attention around America and was one of the major factors to putting Twitch into mainstream media and streaming in general, if only it was in a brighter light. Twitch promptly responded, banning ICE permanently. He has since appealed, but has been rejected. He currently streams on YouTube and Kick. Live robberies. January 1st, 2015. Mr. Underscore 13 IG, or Mr. Big, had an unexpected visit from the police while live streaming on Twitch due to a noise complaint from a neighbor in the same apartment complex. The situation took a turn for the worst when the streamer got into a heated argument with the officer at his front door. When the police officer arrived at Mr. Big's door, he requested his name for a background check. Unfortunately, a passerby began taking pictures, further escalating the situation. This led to Mr. Big being taken into the hallway and subsequently being arrested. Unbelievably, 
No one locked the door on their way out, leaving the apartment completely vulnerable. Around 10 minutes later, the same individual who took the pictures returned to rob the place, making off with a headset, some shoes, a wallet, and a phone. The thief managed to enter the apartment twice before an officer returned to secure the door. Thankfully, the thief's entire actions were caught on livestream, leading to his swift capture and incarceration. As a result, all of the stolen belongings were recovered and returned to the streamer. Streamer burns down house. September 27th, 2015. Yushiro, a Japanese live streamer known online as Dasuke, was a Minecraft content creator back in 2015. Everything was normal on stream for Yushiro, until he decided to show his chat room his brand new oil match lighter. Yushiro was then observed igniting a match and placing it behind him while he attended to another small fire he had accidentally created. It seemed that the match accidentally landed in a bag of tissues, causing them to catch fire rapidly. Later, he attempted to put out the growing flames by dousing them with water, hitting them with a cardboard box, and using a blanket to desperately try to smother the flames. Unfortunately, None of these efforts were successful as the fire continued to spread uncontrollably, climbing up the walls of his house and filling the room with a thick smoke. His viewers watched on in horror as the flames continued to grow inside the small apartment. His chat desperately tried to warn him with donation text to speech messages. Yushiro, Yushiro, behind, behind. Call 119 Yushiro. Yushiro, as well as his 73-year-old mother, 68-year-old father, and a 62-year-old relative sustained injuries. And to this day, there is no information about how serious said injuries were. Bottom of the iceberg. Fly in Stalker, June 7th, 2022. Caitlin Siragusa, more widely referred to as Amaranth, is a Twitch live streamer, cosplayer, and OnlyFans model. Primarily, her content revolves around Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, or ASMR for short. It's sadly not unusual for female content creators to have a few stalkers, and it seems to be the price of online fame nowadays. Amaranth shared a distressing incident involving a man who traveled all the way from Estonia to allegedly break into her home. She expressed her fear for her safety as the men had been spotted wandering around her neighborhood and streaming on Twitch under the name Kind Caitlin and Make Her Smile. Amaranth later provided more information about the stalker, revealing that he was arrested and detained by law enforcement. According to her, the individual sold everything he had in Europe and embarked on a desperate and self-destructive journey to Houston, Texas, where she resides. He even camped out near her P.O. box at a Starbucks for over a month. This individual went to extreme lengths to pursue Amaranth, selling his house, car, and even giving up his beloved cat. He recorded videos publicly and privately, almost like a manifesto of sorts documenting his actions and feelings. Whenever Amaranth declined his request to meet, the man would allegedly respond with aggressive statements like, liar, liar, fiance. On June 13th, after he attempted to gain entry to her home and spent over 30 minutes lurking around, she called 911. Unfortunately, she experienced a delay of 33 minutes before first responders arrived, and she was disappointed by the lack of urgency displayed by law enforcement itself. In response to the dangerous situation, the streamer decided to hire armed protection to ensure her safety and well-being. This wasn't the end for Amram's stalker troubles though, as the man again in February 27, 2023, attempted to enter her house multiple times as caught on camera and left her a creepy package and a key. Amaranth never disclosed what was in the box or the purpose of the key. The British Scammer. September 2022. Abraham Mohammed, also known on Twitch as It's Slicker, was primarily a Counter-Strike and Reaction live streamer. Slicker recently confessed to taking a substantial amount of money, surpassing $200,000 from his fans and followers to sustain a developing gambling addiction. The streamer's web of dishonesty and deceit eventually unraveled when individuals who were owed money started sharing their experiences on social media. Mikul P uploaded a video in which It's Slicker can be seen requesting money from him. Slicker mentioned being unable to access his bank account and sought assistance from his followers, 
assuring them of repayment within a few months. Shortly after the video surfaced, it caught the attention of Reddit users. Among the worst affected by his lies, he even took money from teenagers and even a cancer patient. You were my friend, bro. And before I was going for my transplant, knowing you're not going to pay back. You're asking for my money, but I pulled together to save my life. Why, you ask? To fund an ongoing gambling addiction based around sports betting, in which he would spend all his money and then send videos to friends and fans asking for more. Even myself was sent a video by Slicker asking for thousands of dollars, in which I replied with a bank statement with $12 in it. The money was later returned to everyone who was affected under the planning of Mizkif, Ludwig, and one of Mizkif's head mods, Wajido. Wajido led the charge in finding out how much was owed and to who the rightful owners it belonged to. Money dares gone wrong. February 15th, 2023. Aiden Ross, a well-known former Twitch streamer, gained fame by playing NBA 2K with Bronny James, the son of LeBron James. Regardless of which part of the internet you come from, you've probably heard about Aiden's controversies, from his conflicts with Andrew Tate to his outrageous pranks and stunts on stream. But one particular prank would put Aiden in hot water. In February, Aiden Ross began his stream by calling random fans and challenging them to complete dares for ten dollars to $20,000 on camera. These pranks range from asking someone to destroy their parents' TV in front of them to pouring a pot of urine on their sister. Fans eagerly participated, enticed by the life-changing money and the thrill of being watched by thousands of viewers. However, this caused a massive uproar as Aiden was seen abusing his power to harm others, even asking fans to squeeze lemon juice and pepper spray into their eyes. The situation reached its melting point when Aiden discovered that one of his viewers had a brother who was a Hasanabi fan. Aiden offered money to this viewer to slit his own brother's throat. It remains unclear whether Aiden meant this as a sick joke or if it was serious, but given the history of others doing extreme things for money on his stream, it's a horrifying thought to consider what could have happened. The Ludwig Subathon Incident, August 29th, 2022. Ludwig Anders Argren is a massive name in the live streaming world, starting out on Twitch where he would stream games, challenges, reactions, and his most notable achievement, Ludwig's Subathon. If you're unaware of what a subathon is, it's a stream where a timer is present, and every time someone subs or gifts a sub, it adds more time, meaning the stream cannot end until people stop subbing or the timer elapses. This even includes sleeping on stream. During the course of Ludwig's Subathon, viewers would call the police over three times, causing SWAT teams to come to their residence fully armed, smashing down doors, damaging the property and arresting the household, prompting Ludwig's partner Cutie Cinderella to have to end his streams. Cutie Cinderella disclosed that during the subathon, their house was swatted and they had guns pointed at them. She found it challenging to sleep while her boyfriend streamed 24 7. Cutie Cinderella revealed that she would stay awake while Ludwig was live during the subathons and would only rest for a few hours in the morning when he was awake. However, on Easter morning, day 27 of the subathon, she decided to take some rest and ended up waking up to find police outside their house once again. This led to her temporarily stopping Ludwig's subathon stream. At the time, Cutie Cinderella apologized for accidentally stopping the stream without mentioning the swatting incident as to not draw attention, possibly empowering others to join in on the prank. Cutie even recently stated that she had a sniper rifle pointed at her chest. Cutie now has PTSD from cars and helicopters due to these events. Swatting is no joke, and you are putting people's lives in danger every time you call the police to someone's residence without cause. She recently spoke out about the situation in an interview with Anthony Padilla, which I'll link down below for anyone who wants to check that one out. Wanted to quickly jump in again with a disclaimer that now we are at the bottom of the list. These topics and events are extremely dark and may be upsetting to some viewers. Topics include mention of suicide, shootings, and murders that have happened on live streams. The Abyss. Wreckful's death, July 2nd, 2020. Byron Daniel Bernstein, better known by his online name Wreckful, was a prominent figure on Twitch since the beginning of the platform itself. Wreckful gained popularity through his World of Warcraft streams and Hearthstone streams. But in recent times, he had been working on his own video game, Everland with plans to release for later in the year. However, early Thursday morning, 
Bernstein raised concerns with a series of tweets in which one of the tweets he seemingly proposed to his ex-girlfriend Becca Cho. Shortly after, he posted another tweet expressing remorse, stating, I feel bad for anyone who has to deal with my insanity, and asking his followers to understand that in such situations, the person experiencing the turmoil doesn't feel in control of their actions. His other ex-partner, Blue Goes Moo, shortly after tweeted out the following, I'm at a loss right now. Something I've been scared of happening for so long happened. I can't stop crying. It's so painful. Please no. Following her previous tweet with, Someone I love killed themselves. I wish I could have said something to prevent it. Why? Later, confirming that Wreckful had indeed taken his own life. Reports had stated that he had stepped off of his balcony in his apartment complex. Wreckful had been undergoing long-term mental health issues, speaking about it live with a live streaming psychologist named Dr. K. His passing shook the Twitch community. Many creators speaking out about how much they loved and missed him. His last stream is a horrifying reminder that mental illness is a silent killer in which everyone and anyone can be affected. World stuff right now. Maybe, maybe it's all uphill from here, though. Everybody, we'll see. I will see you guys uh, either tomorrow or the next day. You guys get lonely. You should talk to each other, maybe, and find some friends to play games with. Many of you play games. I feel like people are always too scared to meet new people. Uh, try to meet others. Have a good night. We'll see you guys tomorrow or the next day. A lot of speculation towards why he took his life is placed on the toxic communities around Twitch and the online harassment and bullying that they dish out. Wreckful was a pioneer for live streaming even before it was a profitable revenue source, inventing live donations, which many streamers across many platforms use to this day. Rest in peace, Byron. Streamer kills girlfriend, December 3rd, 2020. Stanislav Ratishkinov known online as Reflay, is a YouTube live streamer. He streamed a mixture of IRL content, reactions, drinking streams, alongside his girlfriend, Valentina Grigorieva. Reflay received a payment of 1,000 from a viewer to subject his girlfriend, Valentina, to abusive treatment during his live stream, locking her outside the apartment in subthermal temperatures. Tragically, Valentina, who was in the early stages of pregnancy, succumbed to hypothermia at his rented house in Moscow. Disturbingly, Reflay continued filming even as he realized that Valentina had passed away. In the distressing footage, he can be seen trying to revive her, calling out to her in desperation, but to no avail. During the live stream, he received donations from his audience while subjecting Valentina to cool treatment on a daily basis, including forcing her outside on the balcony, hitting her with plates, amongst other painful treatments. This horrific broadcast continued for two hours after her death even when paramedics arrived and pronounced her deceased. A friend of Valentina has spoken out, revealing that his live streams were filled with cruelty towards her, further highlighting the severity of the situation. Live shootings, May 14th, 2022. Peyton S. Gendron went live on Twitch to stream his helmet footage of himself shooting up a store in Buffalo, USA. Before his arrest, the 18-year-old American neo-Nazi committed a heinous act by brutally murdering at least 10 people during his rampage at a local Buffalo supermarket. His motive was driven by a disturbing desire to clean the streets of blacks. Gendron entered the Topps friendly market with a camera and a gun, wasting no time in opening fire once inside. Shockingly, he live streamed the entire massacre to his audience on Twitch. A witness recounted that the horrifying attack began with a black woman being shot, followed by a deacon and another woman. The shooter didn't show any remorse and continued to unleash his violence inside the store. The motive, as confirmed by police, was definitely racial hatred. Gendron was reportedly in full military gear and had written all manner of racial slurs on his rifle. He has recently received life imprisonment. Pre-recorded live stream alibis, December 18th, 2022. Stephen McCullough, or Vote Saxon 07, was a YouTube live streamer who recorded reaction videos on his channel and gaming videos on his live streams. One live stream in particular has a sinister backstory named The Violent Night Christmas Live, where Stephen was seen playing GTA Vice City. However, no one could know that this was a backstory to murder someone 
the person in question is Natalia McNally. Initially considered to not be a suspect in the murder of Natalie, who was 15 weeks pregnant when she was fatally stabbed at her home on December 18th, 2022. Stephen was eventually taken into custody and presented in court. The police suspected that his live stream was an alibi and was actually pre-recorded content. Prosecutors revealed in court last Thursday they had reasons to believe that Stephen's live stream during the time of the murder was planned and orchestrated. They claimed that the video was carefully produced to create a fake alibi for him, indicating that the crime was premeditated. When Stephen was initially arrested the day after the murder, his live stream seemed to provide him with an alibi. However, upon closer examination of the footage and live chat, the police found evidence that the video was fraudulent. A senior detective disclosed that Stephen informed his audience during the live stream that he couldn't communicate with them due to a technical issue. Stephen has admitted to pre-recording the session in a written statement given to police. The YouTuber maintains that he had no involvement in Natalie's murder to this day. Live stream suicide. August 31st, 2020. Ronnie McNutt was a live streamer on Facebook. He was well known for his habit of rambling and engaging in arguments with his audience on Facebook Lives, covering topics ranging from theology to pop culture. On the night of August 31st, when he started a live broadcast, it became evident to viewers that something was off. Roughly 40 minutes into the stream, it was clear that the Iraq war veteran, who was feeling depressed and heavily intoxicated, just wasn't himself at the time. Tragically, during the live broadcast, Ronnie picked up a rifle, which misfired. Despite pleas and calls from loved ones and the presence of police outside of his home, Ronnie chose to ignore them and in a heartbreaking turn of events, fired the rifle one more time as those who cared for him helplessly watched as he took his own life. That gets pretty deep towards the last tier. I apologize for anyone that may have been disturbed by those, but these are stories that need to be told. This is a little different to my other videos that I've released as of recent, but I wanted to give it a shot because it looked like a lot of fun to do. And honestly, it really was. I really hope if you made it all the way to the end, you have thoroughly enjoyed the video. And if you believe that I've earned it, a subscription and a like does go a hell of a long way. Also, if you want to leave any feedback down in the comments, I would really thoroughly appreciate that as I will know what to improve in the next video. We're going to be sticking to long form ones from now on, I think. I have a lot more fun doing them and I know that they're a lot more fun to edit for my head that's for sure. Thank you guys. Peace.